the father, the shepherd over this house. Join me in welcoming none other than Dr. Deron Hepburn. Amen, Give the amen, Lord a amen, hand. Amen, amen, amen. Oh, y'all can do better than that. Put your hands together, man. How many of you are glad to be in the house? Yeah. Touch somebody say, I'm glad to see you. Touch somebody else say, I'm glad to see you. Amen. Let's lift our hands to heaven. Father, we thank you tonight for your word. Your word is quick, it's powerful, it's sharper than any two-edged sword. Anoint our gates tonight, our eye gate, our air gate, our lips. Holy Spirit, you're welcome. We repent of every sin we've committed. Only one person, huh? In word, in thought, and in action. Somebody say, in Jesus' name. Look at somebody say, you might have not sinned in, in action. Y'all hands still raised. Look at them. Look at them in the eyes. Say, you might have not sinned in action. But what does your thought look like? Now look, wait for them to answer. Wait for them to answer. I know they look good. Wait for them to may be seated. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Tonight, y'all, let's go in our Bibles to Matthew chapter 17. Matthew, the 17th chapter. Matthew, the 17th chapter. It's good to see Naaman in the house, y'all. Stand, Naaman. Stand, Naaman. Stand, Naaman. Y'all clap your hands for Naaman. Y'all ain't clapping for y'all. Y'all, y'all, these clip patty cake, patty cake. I'm so proud of Naaman, y'all. You can be seated, name him. He's going to share. I don't know if you, you didn't share yet, but I'm going to let him share on Sunday. But he got some great news. Tell somebody some great news. He got some great news, and I'm going to let him share that. You got to be here on Sunday to be able to hear that. But it's great. Things are happening for him because he's been trusting the Lord. What have you been doing? He been, and think good things have been happening. Uh, 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 one of the good things that's been happening is he got an invitation, y'all, to become a pilot. to become a pilot. Y'all believe that? I'm not kidding. That's right. I, I only share, I, but the fullness of it, he'll share on Sunday. But he got at the details of it and how it happened. But that actually, it really, he, he I mean, it's, I'm, I'm think I'm more excited than him. He called me and I told him, I said, I feel like I'm going to be a pilot, y'all. And I'm not kidding. I, 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 and he had his first interview on yesterday, y'all. For them to pay his way to be a pilot. Clap your hands for that. Isn't that a blessing? So he's on his way. Where did he hear that first? Oh, only Monica. Let me say it. Where did he hear that first? He heard that in anybody who's watching. He heard that in the house. I mean, is that, is that truth, y'all? I mean, y'all got to set up more confidence because people will hear us say things and think, are oh, they just making it up and think, but it's really, it's happening. And I'm going to let him share about how it all come into, it's all coming together. And, I'm, I, 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 and only 35 people in the entire United States was picked. And he was one of the 35 picked. One of the 35 picked. Isn't that awesome, y'all? Oh, man, four months ago, Naaman was on the streets. Oh, man, y'all ain't listening to what I, y'all don't believe me. Tell somebody, four months ago, four months ago, that young man was living on the streets, and now he's on his way to become a pilot. Y'all, that's right, clap your hands for that, man, four months ago. And y'all ask him to make sure when he's here on Sunday, you say, Naaman, what? Did Bishop tell you when he told me what happened? I told Naaman, I said, nobody did that except God. I said, we give the glory to God. Who we give the glory to? Not the bishop. Anybody to get it twisted? Anybody here thinking you give the glory to God? We give him all the glory because only God could take you from the streets to take you into pilot. Amen. Amen. Only God can. One of the things I want you to understand tonight, everybody in this room, is faith is a principle. What is faith? Faith is a principle. Not just a principle. It's the commodity of heaven. When I say commodity of heaven, it's Tuesday night. What do I mean? Right, very good. It's the currency of heaven. Do we use, have to use money on earth? Is money the currency on earth for us to make, uh, 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 buy and sell, trade? So we have to use money, right? Well, to get things from heaven, faith is the currency. That's why I, somebody say amen. Now, if I say anything tonight that don't make sense, you could ask questions. That's why the Bible says without 
faith, thank you, Mother Nana, is impossible to what? So that means that faith must be very, very important, and it's a commodity. So if you're rich in faith, that makes you rich in this world. You need to hear that because everything starts in the spirit before it's manifested in the natural to make up. Everything starts where? If you hear me tonight, y'all, y'all, it will, it will, if you really get past me and hear the word, it will really transform your life if you understand the principle of faith. So none of us is really poor. Even people that come from poor countries, the country may be poor, but heaven is not poor. So a lot of times when people say, well, I'm from a third world country, or I don't have this, or I don't have that. How many of you know the same God in America is the same God in a third world country? Is that right? It just might, now don't just agree to agree, write questions down. It just might be that people in a third world country may have to use a greater measure of faith. Again, if I say anything you don't understand, write it down because we can ask questions. That means it may take more on their level for the belief, but faith is, is available for Americans, is available for Haitians, Bahamians, Jamaicans, uh, any third world country faith is available for. Everybody can be rich tangibly, but how many of you know we could be rich spiritually? Is that right? If we, is, we serve the same God, if we serve, it's the same God that blesses one and all, and does, he doesn't, God is no respecter of persons. Is that true? Look at somebody say, God is no respecter of persons. I don't believe you. Look at somebody else and say, God is no respecter of persons. So if you exercise faith, will faith work for you? Yes. Okay, if somebody in Haiti exercises faith, will it work for them? If somebody in America exercises faith, will it work for them? So we all on the same page that faith is no respect of persons. Let me ask you another question. Does faith just work for white people? Only nobody said nothing there. Does faith just work for black people? Is faith just a black people thing? Is faith an all people thing? So anybody that does anything or to receive anything that receives anything from God must receive it out. Say by faith. But it's very good that you say that, not just faith, because I, I want you to understand we receive it by faith. How we receive it? And then faith manifests in the natural. Then, it, then, it, then, it, then it, it becomes tangible. It becomes whatever you believe in God for, then it manifests. A lot of people don't receive things from God to make it. It's because they're not persistent in faith. A lot of times we pray for something, and if it don't happen, we say, well, maybe God didn't have it for me. We stop believing. One of the key things about faith is you must learn to be persistent. You can't give up the first time it didn't happen. You can't give up the second time it didn't happen. Because you got to remember, faith, if you're believing God for something, it's not just you believing God, but there are things that are fighting your belief. There are principalities, whoever hear me, there's powers. There's sometimes, and not even just principalities, sometimes it's your, your own mindset that fights it. But maybe I'm not good enough. And, and how many of you know some things we blame on the devil is not always the devil, it's our own thinking. I wish I had somebody, I'm not good enough. I, I, maybe God is punishing me. Our, our minds, anybody mind ever start tripping on them? For, oh, let me try it again. How many of you know our minds is our battlefield? So when we could begin, to, and the way we cancel that battlefield or speak to that battlefield is by believing what God said. So one of the first things you want to write down tonight is anything you believe in God for, business, husband, school, pilot, or, or wife, healing. You have to be persistent. You can't say, I believe God for healing and give up because of what the doctors say. Because God transcends doctors. He trans, okay, one mother Diana. He transcends laws. So one of the key things I want you to hear tonight in faith is faith must learn to be persistent. What it must learn to be? Persistent. Uh, never give up on anything you're praying for. Never give up on it. I don't care if you, if it doesn't, I don't care if it's raining. I don't care how bad it looks, how dark it looks. Never give up on what you believe in or what you're praying for. And that is one of the things that most people are tempted with. They're tempted to quit. I don't see it happening. I'm too old. It ain't gonna happen for me. Faith has nothing to do with your age. Say, prove it. Abraham and Sarah were able to birth in their late age. They didn't stop believing. They believed God gave them a word. It happened. They performed. Ooh, she lady laughed in the back as far. That's how Sarah laughed. They believed God in their late age. Did God produce? I see, so faith is no respect of age. So anytime you start thinking, I'm too old for this to happen. I can't do this anymore. That's not faith. That's not the language of faith. You have to watch the way you speak. If you're speaking, I'm too old. Good preaching. If you're speaking, it can't happen for me. I'll never be delivered. It'll never, uh, God will, God forgot about me. That's not the language of faith. The language of faith is all things are possible. What is the language of faith? 
The next language of faith is nothing is impossible with God. Somebody say nothing is possible with God. So you have to speak that out of your mouth. Because if you stay silent, the silent thoughts will drown out faith. You have to speak it out of your mouth. Another thing I hear you got about faith is you got to speak faith-filled words. Somebody say, I shall be. Say, uh-huh. One person say, I shall do. Say, I shall become. So one of the things that most people do is one of the, anybody ever, whenever a person gets depressed, what is one of the first things they do? Anybody? Say it again. Somebody over here. They shut, they shut down. Very good. They isolate. They get by themselves. They, they get quiet. And when they get quiet, how many of you know they may be quiet with their mouth, but their minds are still going? So one of the things that you, have, you and I have to learn to do when it comes to faith is we got to speak faith. In, we got to speak what we believe in God. I shall own a business. I shall be debt free. I will be married. I will bear children. You got to speak faith filled words. And you got to ask yourself, the thing I'm believing God for, am I constantly speaking over it? Because lies are constantly speaking over you. Only one person. All lies are constantly speaking to you. So when lies are speaking to me, what does the word say? And I, you know what I just heard those words say too? If lies are constantly speaking to you, it must, if the devil's trying to convince you of a lie, why? It must be that truth works. Oh, yeah. I'll say it again. Because why you have to convince somebody uh, 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 that, that, that they don't look good if they look good? That means I must be bothering you by the way I look. So you're trying to make me feel bad. So Satan knows that faith works. What faith does? Somebody say faith works. Say it again. Say faith works. So when you have pastors telling you to repeat and to say, that's not just religious. That's not just uh, 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 something to, to have you repeat. Because faith coming by, watch this. How does faith come? So how do you hear? You got to speak it out of your mouth. So obviously there's power in what we say. Say there's power in confession. It's only my right side. Everyone say there's power in confession. So you got to confess, I'll have a new car. Get in your, around your parking lot. If you ain't got no car, you got to confess, I'll have a license. You got to confess, especially if you're in a ministry that builds faith. That means if you're in a faith ministry, you're there to build your faith. God wants you to have things from the faith realm. So anything that you see is operating in the ministry is for you. So if you see people getting blessed in the ministry, if Rosie Pops are coming, Monica baking bread, that means that God is doing things in the atmosphere. God ain't doing things for one or two person. It's whoever activate faith. Somebody clap your hand and give God praise, man. So, you know what I'm hearing? Pastor Coco, I hear, I'm hearing you need to be a faith activator. You can't just be somebody that watches other people do it. Listen to what's being spoken in the atmosphere and say, God, if you're blessing in the atmosphere, why would you bless them and not bless me? I need to get to work. What I need to do? Okay, a perfect example, uh, example is they were giving stimulus check. Correct? Uh, okay, agree. How many of you got some stimulus money? Don't raise your hands like you're scared. I promise you, no, I'm not coming for it. How many of you will admit, Bishop, I got some stimulus money? Okay. When you got your stimulus money, wasn't there something you had to do to get it? You had to fill out paperwork. You had to show certain things so you could be able to withdraw the money, correct? Same with faith. You can't just expect it to just happen. You got you to gotta begin to do certain things for faith, for the manifestation of what you believe in God for and speak it into existence. And if you know you did everything right and didn't get your money, were you gonna, and you saw other people getting their money, what you was going to do? You, uh, uh, you could do your research and be like, look, here, how come they get theirs and I get mine? You're not going to stop. And the same thing with faith. When you see other people getting their blessing, it shouldn't say it will happen for them. It should, or you become jealous or envious of people, which you should say, if God could do it for them, God could do it for me. Clap your hand if you believe that, man. <laughs> I feel like I got to build some faith in the room, but that's my job, but I don't mind doing it. Let's go. Matthew 17 and verse 13, we're going to begin to read from 13, 17 and 13. It says, the disciples, then the disciples understood him that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. Are we in the book? Am I in 17 and 13? 14. Thank you, Miss Carolyn. And when they were come to the multitude, and when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him, saying, Lord, have mercy on me, my son, on my son, for he is what? What is he? A lunatic. What was he? A lunatic. Maybe your Bible said something different. And saw vexed. For oftentimes he followed into the fire and oftentimes into the water. 
And I brought him to thy disciples. Who they brought him to? Everybody talk to me. Same Bible. Who they brought him to? And they could not cure him. Now, first of all, yo, let's paint the picture of this. This young man is a lunatic, the father says. He said that the, the demon, or how the, whenever the spirit come on him, he would cast him into fire. He would cast him into water. So it almost looks like this situation looked hopeless. Who agrees with me? Did it look hopeless? It looked like impossible. Why? Why believe God? So tonight, anybody in this room that seemed like they have an uh, impossible situation, you should perk up at this message. Anything that's impossible, whether it's a family member, whether it's healing, whether it's a house you believe in God for, a credit, uh, a, a car, your credit is upside down. The situation looks hopeless, whether it's something going on in your own personal life, and it looks like God, there's no way. This father found himself. So if, you, if that's you, you can identify with this father. He found himself with a situation with a lunatic son. With what? Now watch this. And then when he brought his lunatic, thinking now, let me take my lunatic son to the disciples to cast out. The disciples could not do it. Am I right? They could not cast out. But watch the father. The father's faith did not quit. So something in this father, I don't know why I'm feeling the anointing tonight. Something in the father was very, very unique per se. He had a lunatic son, but there was still something that was operating in the father, and it was called faith. What was it called? How do you know faith was operating? Because when the, the disciples could not cast him out, the disciples said, you know what? This, he, he, the father didn't say, this is hopeless. Man, I know I came to the church. The church failed me. I came here. I, tried, I gave the church a try. Nothing happened. Watch what the father did. The father said, you know what? The disciples got to have a teacher. And if the disciples failing, I'm taking him to the teacher. Who are you taking him to? Now, what should you get from that? The father was being persistent. Remember, I said to you that faith is persistent. The father could have said, this is hopeless. Any of them. What was I thinking? Taking my lunatic son, and I know nobody could kill him. I, I, what was I thinking? It can't happen. But in spite of it looking like it can't happen, this father was still moving. A lot of times, the temptation of us, Pastor Elliot, is to stop moving. Satan tries to tempt us, why move? Why try? Why care? Anybody ever thought like that before? Why go? Why say anything? Why do anything? It ain't going to change. That's not faith-filled words. Faith-filled words say, somebody say it will change. Somebody say it again. Say it will change. Somebody say it will happen. So faith is speaking life even when you see death. And that is what made Christ stop for this father. The father say, I'm taking him to the boss. I'm taking him to the, to, to, to the teacher. He didn't go with the disciples. And then the father could even reason and say, man, if the, if the disciples like this, what does the teacher look like? So I know I ain't going to teach because if the disciples couldn't do nothing, then I'm sure the teacher, but the father was persistent. So very good, Pastor. So what we have to learn in our mentality is, I have to learn to have a non, a not quit mentality. You got to learn to say, man, if I make a dollar, stop saying I only made a dollar. Say I made a dollar. Stop saying, man, I only made 50 cents. It's concentrate that I made 50 cents. We have the tendency to be negative rather than to understand that I have to speak faith-filled words. And I'm, not, I'm trying not to say positive because I don't want you to get into positive thinking as much as I want you to get into faith thinking. I want you to associate faith more than positive, uh, being positive, because the world uses that to be positive saying. We're not talking about being positive in, in the world sense. We're talking about being, our faith being built up in a spiritual sense. Make sense? And the Bible says, and the Lord, the Bible says, I brought him to your disciples, and they could not heal him, right? And they could not cure him. Watch this. Then Jesus answered. So if he brought him to the disciples, where else did the father take the boy? Anybody, anytime today. He took him to Jesus. So what we see in that story, the father didn't quit. The father say, my son can get healed. Somebody say, I will be healed. Rather say, I will be blessed. Say, I am the lender. That's what you got to say. Even if you borrow and confess, I'm the lender. Even if you pay in rent, say, this is my own house. Even if you're in a one-bedroom, start walking around your one-bedroom and say, you know what, I got a three-bedroom. God, I thank you for my jacuzzi cut top. I thank you for my pool in the backyard. What is that? That's faith. Y'all hear me. Before Michael Phelps won any Olympic medal, Michael Phelps, this is what he did. He put a picture up inside of his locker. And he said, I will be an Olympic champion. He said, I will win seven plus medals. And he put up exactly what he was going to do before it happened. 
How many of you know Michael Phelps is one of the best swimmers that the world has ever seen? So he was operating in the principle of faith. Now, I don't know if he ever realized it, but he was speaking and operating in faith, and it happened. As believers, we know that that's not just our thinking. We know that's the power of God that's causing that to happen. So when we begin to change the way we speak, y'all, and be persistent, we're going to begin to see change in our lives. We are negative people, and a lot of times, too, we may be negative because you may be around negative people. So one of the ways you got to find out whether you're positive or negative is, again, whether you're faithful or not faithful, I got the Holy Spirit tonight, is you got to ask yourself, who am I around? What do they say constantly? Am I around a, a, somebody that's always down, always speaking? Well, I try. Every time I try. If that's your best friend, you need to start trying out some new best friends. Because what's on them is going to do what? So you got to associate yourself with people who are faith builders. You got to associate yourself with people who, 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 who are doing things, not just sitting down and, and waiting for it to happen. You got to surround yourself with faith builders. That's why it's important for you to come to church, because what church does is the word builds faith. What does the word do? So it's when you hear preach word, it builds your faith. You're just coming and say, I was at Bible study. I'm building your faith right now. I'm stirring up your dreams. I'm showing you that I could be a multimillionaire. I could be a billionaire. And I'm showing you how do you become those things. You work hard. You be persistent. And you speak it in the atmosphere. What you do? What you do? You speak it in the atmosphere. Just for a lack of a better illustration. I remember I was watching television this time. And this lady had won the lotto several times. And they said, they went and they said, what is your secret? She said, I put the lotto ticket under my bed, under my pillow, and I said, I'm going to win the lotto, 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 I'm going to win the lotto. And she said, every time, and she's become, and she didn't just win a little bit of money. And I watched this lady, I said, you know what, all she was doing was operating in faith principle. She was speaking things that are not as do it work. Only one person heard me. What we do is, we, 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 we don't speak it because we don't believe it. Or we speak it and we stop speaking it when the negative happens. We speak it and then when something negative, be like, oh, oh, well. And we give up. That's not faith. Faith is the father went to the disciples. The disciples could not do it. When the disciples could not do it, the father didn't stop. He found, the, he found Jesus. Notice this too. Faith doesn't wait for no one to come to them. A lot of us, we waiting for people to come to us. You got to open your mouth. What you got to do? The father found the disciples. The father went to the disciples, and he also had to find God. A lot of times we wait for people, well, they ain't see me, I'm here. You know, if they ain't see you, you wait till they see you. Sit on the front row. I've been to that church several times, and they ain't never called my name. Well, come eight times and sit on the front row the eight times. Come until you get noticed. Stop giving up so quickly. Because a lot of times we look for things, reasons why to say God didn't do it. It wasn't that God didn't do it. It was that you didn't do anything to cause God to activate. And what causes God to move? Remember that God is no respecter of faith. Faith causes God to move. Whoever heard that? Faith is the currency of heaven. So how many of you saw people who are not saved get, still get blessed? Why? Because they operate in the law of faith. It ain't that they're better than you or me, but they operate in the law of faith. They said that 50 cents, and again, this is for somebody in the room. They said before he became popular and became who he was, he would sell Tapes out of the back trunk of his car in New York. Just sell out the back trunk of his car. Now today he's one of the greatest rappers that the world has ever seen. He was operating in the faith principle. We sit in church and we come and we, when things don't happen, we get discouraged. We say, man, I, it didn't happen. We look at age. But age has nothing to do with your faith. Because what, God, what it takes somebody to do in 20 years, God could do in a second. Clap your hand if you believe that. Would it take somebody to, with 30 years to do, God could do in two days. Say that. Say, would it take somebody a year to do? Uh, uh, say, would it take someone 12 months to do? God could do in 12 weeks. Say, would it take somebody 12 weeks to do? God could do in 12 days. Notice that you're speaking it. Say, would it take someone 12 days to do? God could do in 12 minutes. And would it take somebody 12 minutes to do, God could do what? In 12 seconds. Somebody clap your hand. That's the kind of God we serve. It doesn't take God long. I hear you, God. And another thing you need to understand, God knows how to redeem the time. Only Monica. So the time that you lost, God knows how to make up. And one of the reasons why, too, we want God to take his time with us, because a lot of things we may be praying for, we may not be ready for. 
How many of you know time is a preparation? If you take the cake out of the oven too soon, what will happen to the cake? If you cook the rice or take it off the, off the pot too soon, what will happen to the rice? It'll be crunchy, so you got to let it simmer. Same with your faith. God prepares us for what we can handle. How many of you know if you're struggling now in your older age, what would you be like if you was 21? Y'all ain't want me to tell the truth. If you're struggling now and to be in church and you ain't got no money, what would you be like if you had some money? Only Monica, nobody else. Y'all ain't want to tell the truth. So what you do now will tell why God can't release certain things to me. Because if I'm, if I'm right now playing the fool and I'm broke, if I had some money, I'd be like, poop, poop. Bishop, how was church? You'd be blow passing me in church, just blowing your horn. You wouldn't be checking for church because you would be comfortable. So God has to prepare us to understand if I bless you, I got to be first. Clap your hand and give God praise in the room. So, say this. Say, faith never gives up. Say, prove it. Did the father give up? How do you know? He, he found Jesus when the disciples could not cure him. Now, what you need to understand is that's not easy. The father said, oftentimes I see him cast into the water. Oftentimes I see him cast into the fire. So I have another question of you. Do you think the father was discouraged at times? Anybody in the room? Do you think he was like, man, this is a hopeless situation? Because he was seeing his son perishing and then taking him to the disciples to do something and they didn't do it. Do you think he was discouraged? But even in that discouragement, he didn't stop. So you know what I just heard? So your discouragement is no excuse. You know what, y'all ready for some more? Who ready for some more? What kills me with us is, or what we got to try and understand with us is, we give up on what we want to give up on. But what we want to fight for, we really fight for. I wish I had somebody to tell the truth in here. We make excuses for what we want to make excuses for. But if we really saw something we really wanted, how many of you know we were going after that? Oh, I wish I had somebody really near. And nothing was going to stop us from getting it. If we really wanted it, same principle applied with faith. We go through things on our job, and we may lose a job, but guess what? We know if we don't go to work, we don't eat, so we go look for another job. We may have an attitude for a week or two, but how many of you know that don't work? Man, I, I, that job took me, me so bad, I can't believe that happened on that job. But then we understand the necessity of working. No worky, no eaty. Y'all ain't got to hear me. So that means if I don't get in the place where my faith is built, it's not God that loses. It's me that loses. And God has so much more for me. I, the other day I met this famous rapper on a hotel, in a hotel. And, and, and the way I knew he was famous was because all his mouth was grilled up. And it wasn't grilled just with grill. They looked like diamonds and platinum and all kind of thing. And I, I said to him, I said, what do you do? He, 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 I said, are you a designer? And he didn't look like the designer. He looked like, you know, he was a gangster. I said, are you the designer? Uh, he said, no, I'm not a designer. He said, I'm a rapper. And I, 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 you know, we begin to talk. And as we begin to talk, I said, well, let me put something in your back pocket. I said, most rappers are writers, correct? I said, do you write? He said, yes. I said, if you write, that means you have the ability not just to write music. You can write movies. I said, you're gifted. I said, so if your songs have become where you've made multi millions, because you could tell, like I said, they were snapping pictures. If you've made millions from your songs, I say, what would you be like with the ability to write movies? I said, the reason why you cannot see that gift in you is because you never had anyone to call that gift out of you. So you're stuck. See, you, a lot of times people think that they're blessed, but they don't understand that God has so much more for them. Somebody say, so much more. Because faith is not just limited. God takes you from glory to glory to glory. God wants us to continue to expand. And you shouldn't stop expanding when you reach 80. You shouldn't stop expanding when you reach 90. Because God, somebody, and say, why, Bishop? Now, I'm going to ask you, you tell me why. No, that's so biblical. That's so spiritual. Why shouldn't you stop expanding? Anyone, Andy, in the corner. Come over here, Andy, come over here. You sit in this corner. Why shouldn't we stop expanding? Come in the front. Why shouldn't we stop expanding? Say it again. Because God doesn't stop. Because God takes us from glory to glory. The only time you stop expanding is when your God stops expanding. Is God eternal? So why do we stop? So everything about you should be increasing. The only reason we stop is, is because we stop being connected to our source. We think, well, I've arrived and that's it. 
Look at somebody and say, God has so much more for you. Uh-uh. Tell the person who you look at didn't believe you. Look at somebody else and say, God has so much more for you. And the way that that comes out, y'all, is by faith being built. You have to constantly be under the word. You have to constantly be around people who will challenge you, people who will provoke you to greatness. Some people are like, man, you're doing well. And a lot of people surround themselves with people who fade on a certain level. You know you got to surround yourself with people who will challenge your faith, who will provoke you. When Naaman came here, say, prove it. When Naaman came here, it's, I use Naaman as an example. Maybe that's why. Naaman came off of the street and Naaman, called, Naaman then I said, flight attendant. Then I believe Naaman saw flight attendant and I said, pilot. So God had more. But if he did, wasn't around and, and having more, how many of you know, and, and his God, if he expanded in pilot, that they could cover, he could have his own airplane or have his own charter flights and having pilots on working for him. But that's the expansion. Clap your hand if you believe that, y'all. <laughs> Let me prove that again. The way to prove that again is faith stops when you stop really. Who wants, let me prove that to you, Mother Diana. The, the prophet told the woman, go and borrow as many bottles as you can find and fill them. And when she listened to the prophet, this is faith now, she did what she was commanded. Did she do? Did he tell her, find 99 bottles on the wall? Did he say, find 100 bottles on the wall? Did he say, find 30 bottles on the wall? What he said? Borrow as many as you what? And then he said, take the oil and do what? Fill the bottles. When did the oil stop? When the bottles stop. So faith stops when you stop. Oh man, that was some good preaching right there. Let me try that again. Faith stops when you stop. So it isn't when mama stop, it ain't when daddy stop, it ain't when the boss stop, it ain't when the company shut down. Faith stops when you stop. So people say, man, I worked for this company for 30 years and I can't believe. And then after the company failed, everything just went down. How many of you know God might have caused the company to go down because he wants you to have your own company? Clap your hand if you believe that tonight, man. Learn from the companies. Say amen. Sometimes God will rock the boat to get you out the boat. Prove it. Say, prove it, preacher. Did he rock the boat Jonah was in? Did he rock the boat Jonah was in? Why? To get him where he's supposed to be. Jonah was trying to run, and you're supposed to be in Nineveh, bro. Look at somebody say, stop running. running. Y'all talking, y'all scared of me. Say it strong. Say, stop running. stop running. That's right, Monica. Monica, I need you up in the front here. Right there. You good, you good. So faith is about being persistent, y'all. And understand it, don't stop. Let's go. Then Jesus answered and said in verse 17, Oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. What Jesus rebuked them for? Their lack of faith. So if the whole foundation of why this boy could not be delivered from his being a lunatic was because the disciples lacked faith. Now, how many of you know we can criticize the disciples, but that's a lot of us in this room? Only, my, only three, y'all. We lack faith, y'all. We, we, we lack it. Because if we didn't lack it, y'all, we'd be seeing more results. We wouldn't have quit. Some of us, were getting older, and you're quitting on your dreams. You're quitting on your desires. You don't even think you used to pray about five years ago that you thought God forgot. Why are you not praying about it now? Because it didn't happen. That didn't mean God changed his mind. You stopped believing. If you have faith, you got to hold on to what you believe. This father's son was a lunatic, and he, did, he held on. Only, oh, Candace, I'm, he held on. This father didn't stop believing. He found Jesus, and your disciples could not do nothing. You know what he's saying? What you can do. And the Bible says, let's read what happens. He didn't give up, y'all. Faith is about not giving up because the invention didn't happen, man. Keep trying. How many people tried the, with the light bulb or flying airplanes? And because I can't remember their names right now. Thomas Edison and the people that tried to invent things, it didn't work the first time. But if they had given up, what, where would we be? But we quit as believers because we don't see it. And when then we blame God for what we don't have. And it was not God, it was us. Jesus, he rebuked them. Jesus rebuked the devil. Who he rebuked? And he departed out of him. And the child was cured. What was the child? When? When? Then the disciples came to Jesus apart and said, why could we not? We cast him out. Well, you even got to ask. You think they had to ask why? They, because he, was tell, he told them you faithless. So they already knew. 
if there's one, I'm perverse. So we, they already knew what was going on. We think, and they still pull him aside. <laughs> do we do the same thing with God, Bishop? Um, after I preach, you still come asking me questions after I preach the word. And the word was already preached. She's already said it was tied to your faith, but they pull him aside. Let's go. Jesus said to them, because of your what? Because of your unbelief. Tell somebody next to you, say, your unbelief is your problem. Say, Bishop ain't your problem. Say, Mother Diana ain't your problem. Say, your mama ain't your problem. Say, your husband or your wife ain't your problem. Say, you your biggest problem. You broke because you won't invent. You broke because you're afraid. You broke because you prayed for something and it didn't happen the first time and you quit. But faith is learning to be persistent. Listen, say prove it, Bishop. It, did, it said, listen to whoever, whoever heard it. It said, when Jesus prayed for him, what departed? What departed? Maybe only my right side. Tamika, help me out. When Jesus prayed for the boy, what left him? It was the devil. It was the devil in him. So what was, it was a spiritual, it wasn't Jesus didn't say, I cure you, um, and, the, and the healing took place. Jesus let us identify. There was a spirit at work in that boy. So what was happening? This was spiritual. This was a spiritual attack. So some things you're fighting for, the devil won't let you go. The devil won't let go of your car. He don't want to let go of your husband. He knows if you come into church faithfully by yourself, what will your husband come in? Y'all be a team. Y'all be double trouble. You'll be a double threat for the devil. you a threat by yourself. Oh. So right now you a single threat. You think the devil wants you to be a double threat? You get it. Say prove it. Whatever two of you on earth touch and agree on. So the devil knows that if I could fight them single, I can't let them get free, get married. I can't let them find somebody to love them. Because if they find, get married or find, love somebody and they get connected, they can be double. So I'll fight what they're praying for. If you, I'm, you want more proof? If you broken as a giver. So you don't even have money in your pocket and you're always trying to help somebody. You don't even have gas in your car, you're always trying to give somebody a ride. You're always trying to take care of somebody and you broke. You don't think the devil can try to fight your finances? Because he sees what you do with no money. What will you be like if you get money? He see the way you are, so the evidence of who you are is what you do with what you have. So you think the devil ain't trying to fight your house, he's trying to fight your car, he's trying to fight your family, he's trying to fight your relationship, he's trying to fight you, because he, see, he sees and he knows, if they doing what they do and I do what I do to them, and they still trying to fight me, what will happen to them if they get totally free? Clap your hand and give God a praise if you get that. Somebody punch your hand in the atmosphere, say, I am a threat to the devil. Say it like you mean it, those who are threat. Stand up on your feet. Say, I am a threat to the devil. Say, my prayer life is a threat. Say, my faith is a threat. Say, my love is a threat. Everything about you is a threat to the devil. That's why he fights you. Be seated. Clap your hand and give God a praise if you understand. Them devils didn't want to go nowhere. But they, guess why they had to go somewhere? Tell me why. Because faith was in operation. Where was it in operation? I, no, this is what I said. I say where? In the Father. Say, how do you know? You tell me. He never gave up. Your biggest threat to the devil is not your height, not your size, not your skin color, not your money. Your biggest threat against the devil is your faith. Satan will bless you all day, but he hates your faith. He don't care if you get a brand new house. He don't care if you get a brand new car. He don't care if you get a brand new suit. He don't care if you get a husband or a wife. But mess with that. He hates your faith because he knows your faith will bring much more. So what he, he knows that's what pleases God. So the area in the, everybody's life, he ain't just trying to fight your children. He ain't trying to fight your singleness. He ain't trying to, he's trying to fight your faith because he knows if I could grab a hold of their faith, I could paralyze them. I could, ooh, clap your hand for those who... Uh, if you hear me tonight, jump on your feet and clap your hand. Not those who pretending to hear me. Not those who just playing. I want to hear what he can say tonight. Those who understand faith. You may be seated. 
Takia, I know she may be watching tonight. Takia called me today. And if you don't see me ch challenge her, ask her. Takia called me today. And Takia said to me, she said, Bishop, I'm traveling. I'm going to take a trip. And she said, I know I have to pay for my school. She said, I have to pay my own bills. I'm not in no relationship. I have nobody to help me. And she said, because I wanted to take the trip, she said, I don't have the money to go, Ms. Sheila. She said, I don't have the money. And she said, she went to God. And she said, God, I have to get a certain amount of money to be able to take this trip. So this past weekend, she had to make some outfits and some things she wanted to put together. She said, Bishop, I went there and she said, I made the money I needed to take care of everything just like that. <laughs> These words were her words to me. Her words to me was, I must never stop. She said, if I had stopped, I wouldn't have made the money. So one of the things the devil will try to do is discourage you where you are and make you what? Oh, man, only one. He may, tries to make you stop because a part of the characteristic of faith is what? P movement, persistence. So the, when you know you're losing faith is when you want to stop. When you know faith is still in activation is when you're persistent. You're still moving. I know how we're getting there, but we can get a ride. I know how it's going to happen, but we're going. When you're still moving in faith is when things happen. When you stop and turn around and quit, that means your faith is being attacked. Not the person. Your faith is being attacked. Because Satan knows, I don't have to mess with their money. I'll mess with their faith, and their faith will mess with their money. So a lot of people are trying to save their money, but that money is not the problem. you got to try to save your faith. Because your faith will produce the money. Only one person heard me. Most people are trying to save the home or save the car. You can't worry about saving the car or the home. You got to make sure your faith is intact because if he attacks your faith, then you can lose it. You fail alone will cause you to lose the house because you start operating in your own mindset and it causes you to become afraid. When you become afraid, you sink. You don't believe me? Ask Peter. Peter looked at the storm and he sank because he took his eyes off of Jesus. Faith causes you to move regardless of what. Am I helping anybody? Am I helping one person? That one person I'm helping, clap your hand and give God a praise. So faith is never taking no for an answer. I preached that before. Another part of faith is being persistent, regardless of how it looks. Still showing up. As tired as you are, still going. As much as it may be overwhelmed. Pastor Crowcroft is not living because of dialysis. Ms. I know I say Pastor Crowcroft a lot. Miss Carolyn is not living just because of dialysis. They're living because of faith-filled words. When they lay on that blood and their blood is circulating, the word of God comes to them. When they see that, it's the word of God that keeps So we know man should not live by dialysis alone, but by every word. That proceeds. So more than just dialysis and surgery has them living. It's the fate of God that has them living. <laughs> Mother Diana, leg has been swollen. A lot of you in here don't know Mother Diana's lot was, her eyesight was dealing with her. Mother Diana, when she watches any, every, any television, she said when she watches the game, she said to go right up to close to the TV to see it. Mother Diana hasn't allowed her situation to paralyze her. She handles the prayer line. She answers the prayer line phone. So when people call and, and want to commit suicide, people call and cry. She said a day a, a gentleman called from Georgia crying and saying how he, he has to go into surgery and he couldn't talk about what it was. And she said she began to pray and he break down crying and weeping. She was an encouragement. He said, I want to talk so much more, but I have to go to the hospital. So in the midst of her going through, she's still ministering. That's what keeps her alive. <laughs> the enemy, if any of these people I'm using, go to them. Ask Pastor Crowcroft. These are evidence of faith. So we see the Pastor Kogov just came out of the hospital for almost a week or two. As hard, he said that they found an infection in his body. And here he is in church tonight. He's in the place. Listen, I know what got me alive. If I stay in here, I know I'm going to die. And listen, many times, y'all ask him. I had to tell him, I asked him lately. I say, are you supposed to be at the hospital? Because I know how you go. Y'all think I'm joking. I call him. I say, are you? My first question was, not how you doing. I say, are you supposed to be at the hospital? He said, Bishop, I stopped breaking out. I'll get that one later. What that means is Pastor Crowcroft does not like to be in the hospital. He's break out the hospital to be in church. Many times he's left the hospital because he understands, look, I don't want to die. I want to live. And I won't get to the house that can cause me to live. <laughs> Come on and clap your hands, somebody. And ask him. So this isn't just me talking this, y'all. Anytime you think I'm just talking, the people that I'm calling go to them as proof. 
Go to them and ask the name ones. Ask the Coco, ask the Carolyn, ask the people in this room what has them still moving. It's because they believe God. And, if, and then what should cause Pastor Coco and, and, and Ms. Carolyn's faith to go to the next level too? That if we could believe God and we could defeat death, what else can we defeat? If death has come for us and we have not died and we defeat death, what else can we de defeat? And let me say this, this is just a nip to it. That means both of you have the ministry of healing in you because the enemy only attacks where your strength is. Oh. That means, any, that means the mother, anybody in here that's any, struggling with any affliction, wherever your struggle is is where your strength is. That ain't where you're supposed, that's where your strength is. So wherever you attack is where you're supposed to be a strength to others. That's whoever said amen, let's ride. I'm enjoying this tonight. I, you know, we could preach a lot of things, but faith is the foundation. If you ain't got no faith, it's, what's, what, what's the point? You might as well just quit. If you ain't no faith. Faith is the foundation. What is faith? To everything you want from God and learning it, learning. A lot of people don't get what I'm teaching you tonight. A lot of people don't understand this. A lot of people go, I didn't understand faith, y'all. I grew up in church from 14. I didn't understand faith what the pastor was preaching about faith. And he would say, believe God, believe God. And I was thinking, God, I believe you. And they would say, fast. And I would fast. And I'd be like, God, I'm fasting. I'm praying. I believe you. What am I wrong? What's wrong? I said, God, what's wrong? Until I was in my, almost in my 20s and God had to show me. If you believe in me to take a trip, you got to get dressed like, and pack your clothes like you go to the airport. If you believe in me for a job, you got to go, and for that interview, you got to get dressed like you already get it. Faith is moving regardless of what it looks like. I never knew that. I heard the belief part, but didn't understand the works part. No one broke it down to me that you have to act and move and still, still go and like it's happening, like you got a job. You're supposed to go with your briefcase even if you ain't got a job. You're going to look like a car. You can't go looking for a car with flip-flops. You can't say I won't get married. Your nails ain't done. Your hair ain't done. Is that plain enough? You can't say I won't get married. You sleep till 3 o'clock in, in the afternoon. Uh-oh, the whole church goes quiet. You can't say you won't get married and then, and then you won't marry. And then you know what you say? Lord, send me a wealthy man. Get out of here. How you going to pray for a wealthy man and you broke? Lord, uh, can I go some more? Oh, y'all don't like this. I'm coming for you. Lord, send me a wealthy woman. How you want a, you want a wealthy woman to pay your bills? And let me say this. You know, man in here want no woman to pay their bills because the minute she get tired of you, she can boot you out. Thank you very much. I'm so glad you're here. That's the truth. Men are called to lead, to be the priest. You should ask God to put you in a position. I know we're living in a day now, women power, women rights and all that. But you should always want to be able to financially lead and be in position to help a woman. Amen. I thank all the women that said amen. Some of the men looking at me cross-eyed, amen. I don't care how successful a woman is, a woman wants a strong man. She wants a man to be able to provide and take care. I wish I had somebody in here. Woo, preach black man. A, wo a woman wants someone who, if she falls, who could pick her up? Who can carry her? Who could undergird her? Who could provide? Correct? All the women that know that's the truth, jump on your feet so the men could see you. So the men could see you. You may be seated. It is a very good word, but that's why you got, and I wanted to phone y'all, as she comes up, she comes up and she's striving because she saw my faith. So her faith is making a shift. It's making her just go, and she's thinking, how could we do this? How could, it? she tell me this, now we got, we got, we went from seven kids to 10 kids to 12 kids. The school is constantly growing. She's constantly thinking how it could expand, what she could do. That all come from seeing faith. You got to be around faith for faith to grow. Clap your hand if you believe that, y'all. So you know what you got to ask? Who's in, your, who's in your Facebook? Only Miss Carolyn. Who's your Instagram? Who's in your cell phone? Who are your best friends? Who are the people you talk to? And are you talking to them who are producing 
Or are you talking to them, what happened today? Who did what? Who did that? If your conversations are just elementary on what they did, who made them mad, who made them angry, that's where you can stay. You got to be around strivers, people who are producing. Man, I made 1000 a day. I made 2000 a day. And if you're around them making 2000 be like, what? You made 2000 Tell me how you made it. Am I talking to anybody in this room? Let's go. And the Bible says, and Jesus, the, verse 19, then came the disciples to him and said, why couldn't we do that? Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief. For really I say unto you, if you have faith, if you have what? What are we talking about tonight? Faith. faith was the problem. Somebody say, I'm my own problem. Say, my belief. And it doesn't mean that your belief won't get attacked. Did the father's belief get attacked? Did his belief get attacked? What would he beat? He beat unbelief. How did he beat unbelief? By his persistence. So you win if you keep moving. When would he have lost? If he had stopped. So what is the devil's objective for you? It's to make you quit. It's the power, it's to make you stop, Andy. It's to make you get angry, get hang up, get hang up on what somebody did, who did what, how they messed me up. And, and you got to understand, my fate is bigger than them. Ooh, that's so good. That's for somebody in the room. You got to understand, you can't let family stop. You can't let the people around you stop. You got to understand, this is bigger than you. Your faith got to be bigger than the people around you. It got to be bigger than your boss. It got to when your boss make you mad, your mom make you mad, your dad make you mad. You got to understand, this is bigger than you. I can't let your madness stop me. I don't go home with you. But we carry boss home. We carry family home. When you go to bed at night, you got to go to bed by yourself. So what you want from God has to be bigger than the thing you go through or the people that challenge you. Yeah. Only Mother Day, I never heard that, man. Man, God. And most people you around, when you get where you're going, they're not even going to be there anyway. And you're allowing them to stop you and they're just temporary? So you're letting temporary people stop you from your goal? All the enemies you had, where are they now? Where is Betty that didn't like you in the 10th grade? Well, <laughs> thank you, thank you, Monica. Where's Tommy in the 12th grade that you were so jealous and was trying to, you don't even know where they are. So the people, you got to understand, what I want is transcends what the people that are around me, the hang-ups that I'm getting hang-up on. It's bigger. Look at somebody say, it's bigger than you. Tell them again. Say, it's bigger than you. You know why most people can't get to the bigger? Because they get hang-up. The father never got hang up, except his, do you know what he got hang up on? My son can get delivered. I don't know how, I don't know when, but this boy getting delivered. As lunatic as he may be acting, ain't no fire stopping him, ain't no water going to stop him, my son can get delivered. Was his son delivered? Because that's what he believed and he exercised it by his life. And his son came in deliverance. We're too negative in the church. That's right, Mother Diana, we're negative. And all we need is one negative thing to happen to quit. How many times our car break down, we still take it to get fixed? And most of us, if the tire flat, we put on a spare. And we put on the spare till we could afford the tire again. We don't say, I ain't driving no more. Am I talking right? When, uh, the, other <laughs> the other night, somebody broke the run out of gas. And uh, I, I just came from the church and they ran out of gas. The first person they called me and said, hey, I'm on the side of the road. I need some gas. They called me. And what I did, I, I called somebody else. <laughs> I say, so and so on the side of the road, they break down. And they came and we all gave and we put the gas in and they were able to move. We don't quit because we stop. We find a way to get to our destination. Our mindset needs to change in the room, y'all. If you can receive anything from God and God has more for you. How do you know he has more for you? By who he puts you around. He put you around people and be jealous. That jealousy is to make you stop. Anybody be envious? Oh, they doing better than me. Oh, they like so and so more than me. Oh, so and so do it. They favoritism. Anybody got no favoritism in God? What God got for you is for you. And that ain't just words. That's a fact. That's a fact, Jack. Amen. Let's ride. I'm helping somebody with this word tonight. I don't know who I'm helping. But if I'm helping one person, I'm doing my job. The Bible says, he said, because of your faith is a green. He said, if your faith is a green of mustard seed, you shall say to this mountain, remove. And hence yonder to its place. And it shall be what? It will obey you. So what's the power, most powerful weapon on earth? Faith, man. Most of us think, I need a million dollars in my pocket. Get your million and know our faith. 
Get your million and don't have no faith. You're in trouble. How many people have millions and lost it? But you can't lose emotion. When you use faith, faith will increase. You could spend money, but you can't spend faith. That's why we come, because your faith, God wants us to increase. Somebody say, God wants me to increase. And not just increase spiritually, not just he wants you to increase tangibly. You can't help nobody if you're broke. You can't give nobody a ride home if you ain't got no gas. You don't even know how you get no. You can't give nobody no clothes if you ain't got no clothes in your car closet. You can't take nobody shopping. You can't give nobody a building if you don't make the money to be able to afford a building. You can't give nobody a house if you can't have a house or a car. But if you had money to do it, you could be a blessing. Most of us, in anybody that gets your attention, they're getting your attention from you showing love. How you show love? I love you. I love you. I love you. You love me and I'm naked. Clothe me. This is so good. I love you. I love you. I love you. If we can do anything in the kingdom, you have to show people action. People have to see demonstrations. Say, prove it. Jesus fed them and taught them. He didn't just teach them. He fed them. Ministry is not just about preaching the word. Ministry is about demonstrating the word. So what causes people to listen is, boy, what you do. It's like the love that you show. Say, love is action. That's faith. Faith works by love. Ima, faith works by love. Faith works by love. How does faith work? Somebody here. How does faith works by love? Faith works. Not what you say, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, and I'm hungry. And you eat in front of me. I love you, I love you, I love you, and I naked. You could wear, you have on brand new shoes. You see my shoes wearing out, and you ain't doing nothing. Me. I love you, I love you. You know I ain't got no soap. I love you, I love you, I love you. You brought, bring a bunch of food home. You eat, and I don't eat. If you love me, you will demonstrate it by what you do. Faith is very good. Faith is action. What is faith? And the Bible says, Jesus said, and it shall be impossible. It's your Bible says, it shall go yonder into a place and shall be removed. And nothing shall be impossible unto you. Ooh, that's good. Somebody say nothing. That means you could do anything. Say, as you know, people say, I ain't doing nothing because I'm waiting for the money to come. You're going to be waiting a long time. You gotta, we got to get out and look. We got to get out and move. You got to get out and seek. You got to knock on the doors. You got to knock. You got to knock. And you got to say, God, help me to be ready for my opportunity when it comes. Because I believe it's going to come. Some of you in here that you want to get married, what is your wedding going to look like? Where are you going to buy a wedding dress from? What is your wedding ring going to look like? Have you, when was the last time you looked for a ring? Some of you that want a baby. When was the last time you looked for cribs or uh, an outfit for the baby? Anything you believe in God for, you prepare before it comes. You cannot wait till it comes and then say you believe God. That's not faith. Faith is preparing as if it's already done, then it manifests. This father knew his son was going to be healed. Say, prove it. The Bible says, how be it this kind come out? And then Jesus said, how be it this kind go it out? But by prayer and fasting. And while they abode in Gal Galilee, Jesus said unto them, the Son of Man should be betrayed into the hands of men. Into who? But he came for a purpose. Even though he was going to be betrayed, he didn't stop. S say, Bishop, why didn't he stop? Let me tell you why. Because faith wins. You could defeat me, but you can't defeat faith. Y'all need to hear that all day. You cannot defeat faith. That's a, faith is, somebody say faith is a weapon. That's three, or faith is a weapon. You can't stop faith. You know, some people say you can't keep a good man down. Anybody heard that? Good man means even refers to a woman. How many of you know you can't keep faith down? You can't stop faith. You could bury it. You could whip it. You could, you, you could spit on it, but you can't keep it down. Faith can rise. Oh, that's so good. Somebody say faith can rise. You can't keep faith down because faith doesn't just operate from you. It operates from the heaven. That's why you got to know it's bigger than you because when God fights for you, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. If you believe that, stand on your feet and give God a prayer. Come on, clap your hand in the room. Come on, clap your hand in the room. That's good. You know what I challenge everybody to do? You, everyone in this room should have something written down. Either it's on your fridge. Either it's something you look at every day to remind you of where you're going. Every something that you see that provokes you, the house, the, 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 
the, the, the, the, the car, the wedding. I have it every day, whether it's on your mirror, in the bathroom, the refrigerator, wherever you go to, the most refrigerator, over your bed. I challenge you, write down what your goals are so your eyes can see it. If you write it down and you work it, it will come to pass. Listen, and it's not just about writing it down, I hear you, God. And it's not just about going to work about work it. It's speaking to the doubt that comes. Because the lies will come. But it's speaking to the lies that will come. It's having faithful words even when you don't see it. It's believing when you don't see it. It's moving when you don't see it. And somebody say, it shall come to pass. Listen, let me tell you why I can say it with such confidence. God is not a man that he should lie. Whatever God say he can do, he can what? Listen to what he said. He said, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you say, mountain be that removed. It shall obey you and be cast yonder. And he, then he didn't stop there. And then he said, nothing shall be impossible. So you know whose name is on it? Only Mother Diana. God's name is on it. So on your belief, whose name, who signed on it? Anybody ever saw, who, you get a check, who got to sign the check? Y'all missed that. If you get a check for some, Ms. Callan, say me. <laughs> if you get a check for somebody, doesn't the, the company have to sign the check? Guess what? God's name is signed on every promise. You got to hear that, Andy. That's not just preach word. God's name is signed on every promise in the Bible. And if the, if the cash, his check can't bounce. Can the check bounce? Can it bounce? So if you go to God, are you guaranteed a cash check? Are you, if you go to God, are you guaranteed a cash check? I can't hear you. Are you guaranteed one? Look at somebody say 100%. And guess what? If the, if the check don't cash, then you go to the boss. Because most times you don't get the money from the boss. His secretary will leave the check. Be like, look here, I ain't come for you today. Where the boss? Where who? Boss. Who's the boss? God. Who's the boss? God. God, Jesus. And we know the boss can handle the check. Will God handle every care that he promised us? When you leave here tonight, keep that in your mind. Don't just come to church on Tuesday, y'all. And say, I can't have it, man. If you want a, a company, believe you could have your company. You want a husband or wife, you want your own album, your own record, your own CDs, you want a baby. You're not past nothing in God. As long as you're living, there's hope. And that my words have to be more than just yes and, and, and amen. My words, you, you need to say, God, help me. When you drive, say, Lord, make this alive. Cause me to know that I could have healing. Cause me to know that I can see. If you can do it for the lunatic, you could do it for me. Say amen. Say amen. Say amen. Say amen. Everybody tonight won. I want you to hear that. Everybody in this room tonight won. And I'm not saying that to make you feel good. I want you to hear that. If you didn't win, you wouldn't be here. Every time you press in that door, beyond what you feel, what you're going through, beyond the cares of life, you win. Satan's goal is to make you stop. I don't want to go tonight. I don't want to be there. I don't care no more. Why well, care? Things don't ever work. But every time you walk in these doors, somebody raise your hand and say, I win. I say it out of your mouth. Say, I win. I in spite of your failures, in spite of your weaknesses, in spite of your struggles, in spite of all the dark areas of your life, say, I win. I win. Satan's goal is not just to get you to sin. His job is to kill you in the sin. You win. Hand raised. Father, Tonight, we repent. Anybody who repents with me, take a step forward. Eyes closed. Lord, we repent for our unbelief. We admit, God, it's not you, it's me. God, you could give new hearts, you could give new kidneys, you could give new families, you could give deliverance. God, it's not you, it's us. It's our unbelief. It's our lack of belief. Eyes closed. Somebody say, Lord, I repent tonight. I don't care if you repented yesterday. I don't repent if you repented on your way. Come in, still repent. Say, Lord, I repent tonight. Father, we confess it's our unbelief. You have so much more for us. You want to make us the lenders. If, listen to me, y'all. If, if people who are Satanists can make millions, people who don't even acknowledge God, some people in this world are billionaires, and do you know they don't even check for God? They account themselves atheists. Say, there is no God. 
we believe in God. We believe in his promises. We believe in his blessings. You think God don't want us to be wealthy, to be able to do more and have more? How does that even make sense in your mind? People think, oh, the church, the church shouldn't have. The church should be poor. Where's that in the Bible? Oh, they always want your money. They don't set up at strip clubs. Did I just say that? Eyes closed. They be making it rain. Come to church and be like, church wants your money. You want your church don't just want your money. Church is doing things with your money. Yes. Naaman, come. Anybody that's watching and I say, jump, wants your money. Come, Naaman. Naaman was able to be in one of our houses that the ministry has. That are from off the streets. Anybody that's watching. So when they talk, you tell them, go talk this. Come, Andy. Andy, come too. Andy used to be a Rastafarian, y'all. Rastafarian, you know that? The devil wanted to kill him. He's Andy, you know how to kill all your head up, strong men. I know everybody got issues, but guess what? We're still in the house. We got our issues in the house. Amen. <laughs> but if they, we had a house we could put them in, Odie's about to be a doctor. Thank God that we could use the ministry and the finances to be able to provide housing, y'all. Pastor Cocroft, because he was going through so much physically in his body the other day, we had to find him a house. He's in a house right now with where Mother Diana is because we have extra rooms in there. And Mother Diana is helping take care of him. That's because the ministry, y'all. Whoever said thank you, that's what your money doing. But people talk, but what are they trying to take your money? Tell them, oh, come to jump. I know they're trying to take your money, but come see what we do. We could drive them but five minutes away and show them all what we do. And raise in the room. We don't do everything right. But you can't concentrate on what you do wrong. You got to concentrate on what you do right. Because the wrong is designed to paralyze you. Oh, y'all can get that later. If you live in the wrong, you'll never move. You won't get out of bed. Anybody, uh, am I talking right? If you think about all that's happening wrong in your life, you'll just take the cover and just cover right up. You will never leave your house. COVID. Swine flu. Am I talking right? What is that? What is that? Monkey pox. A moron. Am I saying that right? That one. You'll be like, you would never leave your house. So much going on. Be like, you know what? Today, I just, too much. Suicides. Gun violence. Shooting if you go to the food store. Be like, I scared. You would be like, you know what? Too much bad. I sleeping in today. If we stop, who can pay the light? Who can pay the water? How are you going to eat? If you were to shut down right now, what would happen to your life? Nobody giving you nothing. Even the government check is not enough for you to pay your bill. We can't stop in the negative. If I'm helping just one person, if you hear one, don't move yet. If one person in this room hear me, take a step. You can't stop in the negative. You got to find a way. You can't stop because the car break down. Oh, really? Somebody say, find a way. Let me tell you something. I was in my house the other day. The, all the AC broke. My wife heart, the baby heart, the children heart. I said, go buy fans. <laughs> I mean, you got that later. I mean, you got that, Miss Carol. I said, go buy fans. I said, let the fan blow on you, baby. Open the window. She ain't say, oh, I can't get no fan. I want no fan. I want AC. I say, let it blow. She ain't complain. You got to do what you got to do until the AC fix. You can't stop because of life. Oh, I'm talking to someone in here. If you rich, life will still happen. Kanye. Kanye. Kardashians. They all them rich people. And they got all kind of stuff that's happening. They don't stop taking pictures and snapping. And they're billionaires. We in the church, we get one hit and we, I'm out of here. What company will you build? What marriage will you sustain? What friendships will you sustain if one thing go wrong and you quit? 
jobs you had up to your present job. Some of y'all had three jobs, four jobs, five jobs. I could probably count on my hand who in this room who had a job more than 10, 5, 10 15 years. You didn't, before the career you had right now, you probably had five or six jobs. You didn't quit because of one job. Father, tonight, somebody say, Lord, I repent. Make it personal. That ain't fair. Not I repent for someone. <laughs> Say, Lord, I repent. And if you hear me tonight, those who mean it, take another step. You can't stop because you failed. You could fail today, but tomorrow you may be a success. You can't quit because of today. What about tomorrow? What about tomorrow? Does somebody in the room need to hear me? Raise your hands. Father, we confess our unbelief. But we ask, Lord, tonight, somebody that means it, say, Lord, help my unbelief. Say it again. Say, Lord, help my unbelief. I've said it out of my mouth. There are millionaires in the room. I supported Rosie. I supported Monica. I support everybody's dream in this room. You come to me with a dream, I can support you. One way, shape, or form, Bishop Hepburn can support you. If you wasn't supported, you wouldn't be here. So somewhere, you're getting supported. If I call, call you to make an announcement about your idea, if I call you whatever support I gave, show the commercial, I was supporting because I believe. I can't believe in your dream more than you believe in your own dream. And raise father we ask for clean hands I pray that this word find good ground father wherever discouragement lies tonight I pray you encourage oh I wish I had some help in your Lord don't let one sheep be lost let me tell you why you don't want one sheep to be lost because you don't want to be lost ain't nobody in here won't go to hell if you celebrate and won't go to hell that's you the Ron Hepburn don't want to go to hell <laughs> am I by myself I will make heaven. Amen. I wish I had one amen in here. The rest of you won't go to hell. That's you. I will make heaven. So, Father, tonight, in the name of Jesus, help us to be blessed, to be a blessing. I couldn't do nothing I did with the houses I have if I didn't have a little bit. And most of the things I did, y'all, you act, check with people who know I did with nothing. But oh, my fate was a lot more. And my fate has produced. Oh, I, I'm not making that up, it's the truth. I didn't have that, I don't know much million, enough millionaires to produce what I did. My fate has produced. And my fate will continue to produce. You know, eyes closed. Somebody came to the service recently, y'all, and they heard me preach the preach word. They heard me preach about the man waiting by the pool. I, eyes closed. I just want you to hear this story. So they went back to the Bahamas, and they met this man who's the owner of one of the largest, the, the largest Christian station in the Caribbean. The largest Christian station in the Caribbean. So they happened to be driving them. So they became good friends. So the person said, I got this friend of mine in Orlando. He said, you're just waiting by the pool. He started preaching my message to the man. <laughs> Y'all think I'm joking. I'm serious. I promise you this is the case. He started preaching my message to the man. He said, I'm just waiting by the pool. So he told the man about me. Guess what? The man and I just had lunch. He's the owner of the largest Christian television in the Caribbean. <laughs> oh, <y> <laughs> And guess what? Just so y'all will know that I'm telling the truth, I'm bringing him here. He said, I can't wait to come. I say, yeah, because I want to introduce you to my television program station. 
I say, because I got one too. Yours would be a little bigger than mine, but I got one too. He said, I'm coming to see you. And I, I guess what I got his number now, so even if he tried to duck me, I know how to be persistent. <laughs> he said, he's coming. And you know, we had lunch, and all that man talked to me about lunch was everything that he was going through, and I was able to minister to him. And now he wants to build a friendship. And the eyes closed. Let me tell you who he is for those who want to guess. He was one of the assistant lawyers to the gentleman who did the lawyer who was the, the lawyer for the O.J. Simpson case. He is one, was one of the lawyers of Johnny Cochran. He was a lawyer. And he went into his own TV company. And I'm sitting down having lunch with him. Somebody say faith. Oh, Tamika, you heard that. Faith is worth more than money, y'all. He's almost a billionaire. Now, y'all know I got no billions, right? Unless, I know some of y'all think I got it, but I got it like that. I really, it's coming. But he is a billionaire, and he's sitting down. But how many of you know I'm a billionaire in faith? <laughs> oh, y'all don't believe it. How could I be with him if I wasn't? And he's sitting down. He can't wait to come. And then when he comes, y'all, he can fall in love with the church. I have no doubt. So how do you know, Bishop? Because I spoke it. When he comes, he's going to fall in love with the church. I guarantee you it. That's why I wanted him to come. If I thought, if I thought he wouldn't fall in love with the church, I would never invite him, Latanya. I'd be like, you know what? Me and you cool, bro. <laughs> Don't come to this church. <laughs> My next move was to get him here because I know once he comes, he can be like, I love this church. Make sense? Father, we thank you tonight. Anybody that heard this message tonight, clap your hand and give God a praise. You may be seated. Get ready to sow your best seed in the ground. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. What he's doing? He's coming. Probably the next month, before the month is up, he'll be here. So your best seat. Everybody get an envelope tonight. But would you write on your envelopes tonight? Write on your envelopes tonight. Give me one second. And don't, don't put it in yet. Get your seat. Write on it tonight, Lord, build my faith. Lord, build my faith. Lord, build my faith. That's, that's a request you're making. That's, a, that's almost like a prayer you're putting on it. We're going to pray over the sea, but from our lips to his ears. Put right on it. Everybody get an envelope. Shadrach get an envelope. I get an envelope. Everybody giving this offering. If you have nothing to give, come tonight. I have nothing to give, preacher. If I did, I would give. Anyone in the room that have nothing to give, we ain't going to judge you. We're not going to judge you. We can give you something to give. But write in that envelope tonight, Lord, build my faith. Lord, build my faith. Lord, do what? Write that and mean it. Did the father, let me ask you a question. Did the father have faith in him? Take your time. Did the father have faith in him? The, with the son? Was his faith being tested? A part of your faith being built, it will be tested. A part of your faith being built, it will be tested. I hope somebody heard that. A part of your faith being built, it will be tested. We like the result part, but we don't like the testing part. I got it. We like the result part, but we don't like the testing part. But testing we must. Because you got to see what's still in you that got to come out. Be burnt away. Testing we must. We can't avoid the test. Testing we must. Testing we what? Love must be tested. Faith must be tested. Test money got to be tested. How you handle it. Faith we must. Relationships got to be tested. Ministry got to be tested. Tested we must. You can't avoid the test. Adonai came home today, and she, you know, she busted my room. And she busted, she showed me. 
Daddy, I got 100 here. I got 98 here. I got 100 here. I got 100 here. And I went over everything that she missed. I said, baby, I said, when you do good, just go over. Would you? I said, I'm proud of you now. I said, Daddy's so proud of you. I said, go over and see the parts you get wrong so next time you know how to master it. But she got to be tested to go to the next level, y'all. She got to take tests. She'll never know how qualified she is until she take the test. She had to take, it was a math test, and it was a spelling test. It was a sentence, and she had the right sentences. She was just showing her daddy. That's how she's skillful. She will know she's becoming by the test she takes. No test, she'll never know what level she's on. She got to take the test to know what level she's on. Every morning they go up to go get up to go to school. It's part of the test. Every morning, we, every day we got to come to church. It's part of the growth. So your best seed, wave it to the Lord. You don't lose by coming to church, man. Father, honor every gift. Honor the heart. Come, Pastor Elliot. Come, Pastor Coco. You're here. You might as well come. You're here still in the fight. You're still here. Going through, but I'm still here. Miss Carolyn, you're still here. Stand on your feet, everybody. Let's, let's prepare our hearts to go home. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stand on your feet all over. We'll be rolling our envelopes tonight. Lord, build my faith. Who meant that tonight? Who wants their faith to be built? Testing comes by that. Don't be afraid of the test. He won't give you more than you can handle. He won't give you more than you could handle. And he sees you writing. He sees everything. Oh, Father. Somebody say in Jesus' name. Anybody receive anything out of this word tonight? Anybody receive anything out of this word tonight? Yeah, good, good. Good. Thank God faith is still in the earth, right? The Bible says when Jesus come, he didn't say, well, I find speaking in tongues in the earth, you know. He didn't say, well, I find, he didn't even say, well, I find love. It's interesting, Rosie. Y'all, boy, y'all can get this. Andy gone, he didn't disappear. Andy, boy, Andy's faster than a speeding bullet. He's more powerful than a locomotive. When Jesus eats, he didn't say, when I come, will I find peace in the earth? He never said it. Jesus said, when I return to the earth, he said, will I find faith in the earth? Stacy. Isn't that interesting that he said that? He didn't even say, will I find money? He said, will I find faith? Say, why, Bishop? Five of y'all. Say, why, Bishop? Because he didn't have to say, will I find love? Because he knew if I find faith, love will be there. Oh, that's so good. He didn't have to say, will I find love? Because he knew once, if they got faith, love will be there. they like twins, Siamese twins. Kind of one without the other. Is that right? Father, we bless this seed now. Somebody at home is getting touched. Somebody's watching me for the first time. I don't know who you are, but I see you. You, you tune in because somehow you heard about the ministry and this is your first time watching and you, are, you love it. Call us. Don't just watch us for the first time and be like, man, call us and let us know. That builds our faith. That helps us to continue to come on. I saw somebody came on my Instagram today and they said, they, they just joined you and they just joined you. My Instagram was like clicking today. Clicking, clicking, clicking. People just joining today. Come on, go on my Instagram. You're watching this program for the first time. Call us. Let us know how you bless us. Support the ministry. Send in a seed that we could continue to do what we're doing. That the young man you saw was in pretense. That's not made up. That's real. And you could help us do more and be more. Call us. Even if you can't, you can call us and encourage us. And say, keep doing. A word. How many of you would know a word could encourage you? One word from the Lord could encourage you forever. But anytime you see a ministry and you like it, that means what's in that ministry is in you. I mean, what the gifts you see in this ministry is also in you. We have somebody, the, the people from overseas, Pastor Elliot, where are they? Ireland. The people in Ireland, y'all, they fell in love with the church. 
They say they won't become partners with the ministry and start sending finances into our television ministry in Ireland. Oh, y'all ain't clapping like in Ireland. So we want to say hello to Ireland. There's a big family in Ireland that watches us, y'all, and they say they want to become financial supporters of this ministry. They say, tell Bishop, he's right on time with his preaching. How many of you know God always got a ram in the bush? They called Pastor Elliot and told Pastor Elliot, we want to be financial supporters. Isn't that a blessing? Yes. Financial supporters. Father, we thank you tonight. Build our faith, God. We know without God, in, somebody say, in every area. every area. Lord, not just financially, mentally, spiritually. Lord, in every area where we lack, where there's unbelief, in all the dark areas, build our faith, God. Somebody say, God, build my faith. Build my faith. Let me tell you something. Another thing about faith is you got to believe in you. Sometimes we could believe that could happen for others, but we don't believe it could happen for us. Isn't that truth? Yeah. God will do it for everyone except you. That's a lie. He died for you. Yeah. For you. So stop counting yourself out of the blessings. And that's what a lot of you raise your hand. That's what we do. That ain't no humility. You think that's humility? God don't see that as humility. You're getting robbed. Because you think it could happen for everyone else except you. That's a lie. Say it out of your mouth. Say, that's a lie. That's a lie. Say, I'm not going out here tonight with that lie. With say it in a minute. Say, I'm not going out here with that lie. It's a lie. You don't have to believe that lie. So, Father, every envelope. And I saw the person at home watching for the first time. I saw the people turn us on for the first time. God had you to tune on and turn in tonight. It's not by chance that you came to this ministry. He wanted you to hear this message. Here, it's faith that you need. It's faith where you're lacking. Not the money, not the man, not the woman, not the house, not the car, not the healing. It's faith. And he's allowing you to go through what you're going through to build your faith. So everything around you that's happening is so your faith will be built. Not to rob you. Am I preaching right, y'all? So, Father, let this be a sweet smell. Somebody say, I'm here. Open your mouth. Say, I'm here. God bleeding, but we're here. Lunatic in some areas, but we're here. Did the father have a lunatic son? But that was his son. We're God lunatic children. <laughs> You'll get that one later. We're God's. And nobody else may want to claim us, but God claim us. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so, Lord, honor every seed. Honor every 300, every 3,000. Somebody watching may be able to sow a seed of $3,000. You watch, you're sowing on good ground. Yeah, somebody may be able to sow a seed of 300,000. Yeah, that scared some people in this room. You're sowing on good ground. Somebody that's watching me be able to sow a seed of $3 million. You're sowing on good ground. There's no investment like the kingdom. If, if three people will leave that tonight, take a step forward. All I need is three. I said if three people, that we have made our investment in the kingdom. And we wouldn't be here tonight if the investment in the kingdom was not working for us. So God, let us receive our seed. Protect us from the devourer. Protect us from untimely death. Protect our brains. You know, I was reading today, y'all. They said dementia takes out 6.5 million Americans a year. People suffer from dementia. 6.5 million. I read it today. I think it may go Google it on the news. Top story. A year. Somebody say, my mind is protected by God. You better say that, y'all. The devil wants our mind. That's right, Miss Carolyn. So, Lord, let this be sweet. Which, what I said tonight, you got to speak it. You got to speak it. Stop saying, I'm so forgetful. Don't, the next, don't let that come out of your mouth again. I'm so forgetful. I forget everything. Stop that. You set yourself up for dementia. Somebody say, dementia? This is for somebody in this room. Say, Dementia? You can't come up in this house. Say dementia. My mind is whole. In Jesus' name.
Father, we give you praise. That's right, Lashanda. God, every penny, every dollar, every twenty dollars, five dollars. Multiply this. We give you our little bit, God. We give you our little bit. We bring you our five loaves and our two fish. Is that what we do, Jam? And we give it to him. Who we give it to? The Bible says Jesus said to the boy, he said, bring the basket. We put our money in the basket, y'all. He said, bring it to me. Is that right, Pastor Elliot? And the Bible says Jesus blessed it and broke it. And he multiplied it. Tonight our offering will be multiplied. Tonight our offering will be multiplied. I believe tonight somebody's going to sow a seed of $3,000. I believe tonight somebody's going to sow a seed, a sacrificial seed of 3,000. So I say, I believe it. I don't know what direction it's coming from, but I believe it. I believe it in Jesus' name. I speak it into the atmosphere. Do I got the power to speak? Yes, I do. Lift your hands to heaven. Father, Pastor Coco, bless the food. Give him a mic. Use your, use your throat tonight. It's your kidney that's give, trying to give you a problem, not your throat. I still got a voice. And I will use my voice to rebuke the devil. Raise your hand, close your eyes, let's play. Nobody, we got good food tonight. I promise you we got good food. I saw Jerome taking the bags out early. I said, what you going to do? He said, I go in the cook for later. I said, Jerome, make sure you save my plate. Because I ain't been getting a plate. I said, you think I can get a plate tonight? He said, yes, sir. I said, better make sure. Bless the food, sir. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you. God, we thank you for being kind to us. Yes, God. God, we thank you for not forgetting us. Lord, we thank you, God, for providing for us. Yes. Providing, not, God, not just spiritual word, but God, spiritual food, but God, but natural food as well, Father. God, thank you for the people who food serve tonight, the food, God. God. Food thank you tonight. for the people, God, that, 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 that go shopping for the food, food tonight, and do those things, Father. Thank you, God, in the name of Jesus, Give Father, God. Tonight. God, we give you praise. Hallelujah. God, we're grateful tonight. And God, where we haven't been grateful, God, we repent. Yes. We repent right now, for God, for murmuring, complaining, Father yes, God. Yes, that's it. God, give us a grateful heart, Father. Yes, God. Thank you in the name of Jesus, God, for a place, God, that provides, God. Yes. You lead us to an oasis, God. God, yes, place God. Provide, Father, God. God. Thank you, Praise God. Up. In the name of Jesus, in God. In Jesus' that name. That you led us to a church, Father God, that cares. Yes. That has your heart. Yes. God, as we eat that food tonight, God, let it be healing to our bodies. Yes. God, if there's any physical ailments, God, Praise let, God, let the, God, the food, God, heal it. In Jesus' God, name. God, touch it, Father, right yes, now. God, God, we give you praise for it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Come on, clap your hand, y'all. You can clap. You can clap. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Get connected with Jump Ministries Global Church. Be sure to follow us on your favorite social media networks and never miss out on our bi-monthly men and women's prayer services, our youth events and activities, our global outreach and community celebrations, our competitions, conferences, or even just to get that one word to encourage you. Just visit jumpministries.org. Building people, changing lives, and on the move. Joyously unveiling the master's plan. Discover your faith. Experience Jump Ministries Global Church. So if you go to the wrong people for comfort, they can keep you in your condition. Building people. Changing lives. And on the move. Jump Ministries Global Church.